Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be doing an NCLEX review over Pheochromocytoma. This video is part of an NCLEX review series over the endocrine system. So if you're studying that system, be sure to check out my other videos. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about the patho, the signs and symptoms, the nursing interventions, and how this condition is diagnosed. And as always, over here on the side or in the description below, you can access the resources that go along with this lecture such as the quiz. So let's get started. First, let's start out talking about what is pheochromocytoma? What is this big long word? Well, this condition is where a tumor is found on the adrenal medulla that secretes excessive amounts of catecholamines. So let's dive into the pathophysiology. Let's look and see what's going on in this condition. And to help us do this, let's look at the key players that play a role in this condition. Okay, the first key player is the adrenal glands. You have two adrenal glands that sit on top of your kidneys. You have a right adrenal gland and your left adrenal gland. And here is your adrenal gland if you sliced it in half. And what you have as your outer layer is the cortex, the adrenal cortex. And then the middle layer is your adrenal medulla. And that is what we are interested in in this particular lecture because this is where your tumors are. And inside your adrenal medulla are cells. And these cells are called chromaffin cells. And this is what actually secretes those catecholamines. So let's talk a little bit about the adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla via the chromaffin cells secrete catecholamines and it secretes epinephrine, which is also called adrenaline, norepinephrine, which is also known as noradrenaline, and low amounts of dopamine in response to your body's sympathetic nervous system. What's your sympathetic nervous system? It is where it stimulates your body to fight or fly. It's like whenever you are walking in the woods, you see a grizzly bear. What, whenever you see that, your body processes that, it's gonna secrete these catecholamines to get you out of there and save your life. And it does all this through those chromaffin cells. Now, what are the chromaffin cells? They're found in the adrenal medulla, and they are the, these cells are the ones that actually secrete the catecholamines. And this is what your tumor tends to be made up of in pheochromocytoma. These tumors tend to be benign, not malignant, usually. And they are also found in other places in the body, such as the heart, the head, the neck, the bladder, the spine, and the abdomen. And these can turn into tumors in these areas. But if they develop in tumors in those areas, that's not called a pheochromocytoma. It's called a paraganglioma. So if you develop that there, that is what that is called. Now let's talk a little bit about these catecholamines because that is the big problem with this whole issue with pheochromocytoma. You have excessive amounts of catecholamines, particularly norepinephrine and epinephrine being secreted in the body and it's wreaking havoc on your body. So catecholamines play a huge role in how the organs and tissues work. It plays a role from your heart to your glucose to everything. And again, it's produced whenever your sympathetic nervous system is stimulated. So what does it do normally? These are normally good things that it does in the body whenever we need that fight or flight response. For instance, back to the woods analogy, whenever we're walking in the woods, we see a grizzly bear. We want our body to respond properly by doing these following things to get us out of danger. So what it does is that it increases our heart rate and blood pressure. Why do we want that? We need all that extra blood flow, which is gonna be rich in oxygen, to go to our muscles and our body to run and get out of there and help us with our breathing so we can run away from that bear. Another thing is it's gonna increase our glucose. The liver is gonna release its stores of glucose through many processes like glucogenesis and we're gonna get some glucose because we're gonna need it. Our cells are gonna need it because we're gonna be running and trying to get away. Also increases fat metabolism, which, we're, which is gonna be broken down for fuel. Again, we'll need that. It's gonna increase our basal metabolic rate, help us burn some calories. It's gonna increase thermogenesis, which is going to increase the body temperature. And it's going to um, make us feel fear and anxiety, which is a good thing 
in the case of seeing the grizzly bear. So that gets us out of the forest and away. So it determines how we're gonna to respond to danger. But with Pheochromocytoma, these people aren't in the woods seeing a grizzly bear. They're just living life normally and they will get these symptoms, which we'll go over here in a second, on them whenever they don't necessarily need them. And a lot of times what happens is that patient will present to the ER over and over with extremely high blood pressure. They're feeling impending doom, anxious, scared. And first, maybe physician doesn't know what it is. They attribute it to an anxiety attack or something like that. And then they decide to um, look further into this and they see that the patient has a pheochromocytoma, which we'll go over in the diagnosing part. So um, these patients can develop more than one tumor in an adrenal gland and it can be in one or both of them. It tends to be in one adrenal gland most commonly. The cause of pheochromocytoma tends to be a genetic disposition and it tends to be found early to middle age. Okay, so what are your signs and symptoms of this condition? What do you need to know for NCLEX, those nursing lecture exams, the big signs and symptoms? Okay, to help you remember them, remember the mnemonic fight and flight because that's gonna help you remember, hey, this is the sympathetic nervous system, norepinephrine and epinephrine going on here that's causing us to feel these symptoms. And this patient literally is in fight or flight mode because they're releasing all those catecholamines to from this tumor. So F for facial flushing. This is from the excessive hypertension. The biggest things what you're gonna see in pheochromocytoma that's gonna cause the biggest problem is hypertension. They can go into a hypertensive um, crisis. So that's the biggest issues. And these little asterisks that you're seeing in purplish red is the most common signs and symptoms. Okay, the other F is fluttering in the chest, also called palpitations, feel their heart racing. Uh, they will have I for increased heart rate and blood pressure, huge, that will be one of the biggest telltale signs. They'll also, G for glucose will be high, hyperglycemia, why? Because that's what uh, catecholamines do. Anyways, they increase the blood sugar, so they'll have hyperglycemia. H for headaches, these will be sudden, they can come in episodes, and they will be severe. Again, this is really due to that increased blood pressure going on in the body. T for tremors, F for frequent sweating. And again, this is because they have increased thermogenesis going on, they have an increased metabolic rate going on, and they have that high blood pressure. So they're gonna have episodes of sweating for no apparent reason. L for loss of weight, because catecholamines burn calories. I for increased anxiety and fear. That again is tied back to what our body wants us to do if we do see danger, wants us to feel scared and anxious. And here these patients, even though they have nothing stimulating them to feel that way, they will feel that because what well, this tumor is causing the catecholamines to do. G, um, they may have a growing tumor from in these adrenal glands that will grow and put pressure on the abdomen, which can cause pressure or pain. H for heat intolerance, and T for tired and weak, just from that constant stimulation, the anxiety, the high blood pressure, their heart rate racing. Now these signs and symptoms can come in episodes and can be triggered by certain things, such as eating foods with tyramine can trigger it. Tyramine plays a role in blood pressure regulation. So um, foods that it, they may report that they ate, cause an episode of those signs and symptoms, are foods that are aged, fermented, or pickled, like cheeses, wine, specifically red wine, smoke, dried meats, bananas, sauerkraut, chocolate can trigger that. Also, any type of surgery, trauma, physical trauma to the body, injury, emotional stress, or medications like monoamine oxidase inhibitors can trigger signs and symptoms to cause that tumor to start secreting excessive amounts of catecholamines. Now, how is this diagnosed? From a nursing standpoint, you just need to be aware of this because one way this is diagnosed is through a 24-hour urine. And if the patient's hospitalized or will be going home with this, you'll need to educate them how to do that. And 24-hour um, urine will look for catecholamines and metanephrines. Metanephrine is a 
our metabolites formed from when the body breaks down catecholamines. So if you have excessive amounts of those in the urine, chances are you're dealing with a tumor that is releasing catecholamines like in pheochromocytoma. Now if this is high, what will happen is that the doctor will want to further evaluate this, may order a MRI or a CT scan of the adrenal glands to look for the tumor on the adrenal glands. Another thing also ordered is a blood test to measure those metanephrines. Okay, so what is the treatment for pheochromocytoma? And then we'll get into nursing interventions. Okay, treatment typically tends to be an adrenal ectomy. This is where they remove the adrenal gland. It can be bilateral where they really remove both if there's tumors in both of them, or unilateral where they just remove one. And typically with this, um, from a nursing standpoint, you need to know that patients may be prescribed by the doctor a, an alpha adrenergic blocker. And the reason for this, think by, back to this, why would they prescribe them this pre-op? Usually about 10 days of three weeks before the surgery because these patients are dealing with major blood pressure issues. So this medication will help bring that blood pressure down and prevent a hypertensive crisis um, of the patient entering that during surgery. Now to nursing interventions. What are you gonna do for this patient? Okay, the first thing you wanna do is you want to monitor their vital signs very closely because remember, these patients are gonna have, they're gonna be tachycardic and they're gonna be hypertensive. So you want to be making sure you're checking them regularly. Also, you wanna monitor them to make sure they're not entering into what's called hypertensive crisis. This is where the systolic would be greater than 180 or the diastolic greater than 120 for a long period of time because this causes major problems and damage to the kidneys, the eyes, the brain, and the heart. And signs of, and symptoms of this could be a headache, vision changes, neurostatus changes, and seizure. Another thing which goes along with that, all that high blood pressure, pounding on that heart, and puts them at risk for developing a myocardial infarction. So you wanna make sure you're watching, make sure they need to report chest pain if they start having any, or neurostatus changes because they're at risk for stroke, EKG changes, and watching that blood sugar for hyperglycemia. Also, because this patient, remember, has those constant catecholamines being released, it's ca causing them to be heat intolerant, they feel anxious, very fearful, they need a calm, cool environment to keep them not from being overstimulated because if they get stimulated with this, they will, um, sh their blood pressure will shoot up even higher in their heart rate, which will cause problems. So we wanna keep it, keep them calm. Another thing, per doctor's order, if they're gonna go for an adrenalectomy, um, like I discussed earlier, usually what's prescribed preoperatively pre -operatively is called an alpha adrenergic blocker. Um, some of these drugs include like Cardura, Minipress, Hytrin. And how this drug works is that it blocks norepinephrine. Whenever you block that, that decreases those catecholamines, which in turn is gonna give you, decrease that blood pressure. So this will help decrease the blood pressure. And whenever they go for surgery, it'll prevent them from entering into a hypertensive crisis during surgery. However, with this medication, the alpha adrenergics, you wanna watch for reflex tachycardia. Because what happens is that when this blood pressure decreases, because remember it just blocks your norepinephrine, the body's gonna to try to compensate for that decrease of blood pressure. So it'll cause tachycardia, reflex tachycardia, as a response to that decreased blood pressure. And it can also cause orthostatic hypotension. So a lot of times, once the blood pressure gets under control, the physician may order a beta blocker along with this, like labetalol or enderol, to help with that tachycardia they may get and to also help decrease that blood pressure. So what you wanna do as a nurse, you wanna monitor them, their um, blood pressure and heart rate, make sure they're responding normally to that. And other um, education issues and things you want to watch out for while they're hospitalized, you wanna make sure that they're getting a good high calorie diet, because remember, they're burning calories and fat like crazy, so we need to make sure we're giving their body proper nutrition. No caffeine, energy drinks, or smoking, because these cause vasoconstriction. We got enough of that going on in the body right now, so we wanna make sure they avoid that. And if they're going for their adrenal ectomy, 
you just want to make sure that they're aware that depending on if they had it had a bilateral or unilateral they're going to be on hormone replacement therapy so if they're going to go for a bilateral adrenalectomy where they're removing both adrenal glands they'll have to be on glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids for life if they're just having one removed with a unilateral adrenalectomy they'll need to be on glucocorticoids for up to two years so that is an NCLEX review about pheochromocytoma. Now go to my website, registernursrn.com, and take that free quiz. I will test your knowledge on this lecture. And be sure to check out the other videos in this series. And thank you so much for watching, and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.